All right, so we are back at that house that I had talked about the uh, excessive um, electric bills. And I was hoping that I could get a view of that wiring right back there. Right above there, if you can see that wiring, you can see some heat damage. And if you look up inside the uh, gap on the blower itself, the wiring in there should be copper colored and it's all black. It's been burned out, this motor is seized up and actually uh, smoke was getting into the house from that motor burning. So we're gonna replace that. We've got a little bit of a conundrum here. I'm trying to get the blower out and someone has decided that it was a good idea to put a support post for the flooring right there in the middle. Let's see if we can finagle it to where it'll come out. When you're doing a blower motor change, um, sometimes you can get lucky and uh, end up with a blower wheel that'll slide right off the shaft. But if not, um, you need to have a motor puller. My favorite is uh, this particular one here. Uh, Sensible Products motor puller. It works real well for your basic blower motors. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay, we've got the set screw loosened. And it looks like we are going to get lucky. This wheel slides off or slides on the shaft without too much trouble. Once you've got your uh, set screw pulled, you want to go ahead and flip it over. Move to the other side. And from this side, you can see the uh, burnout on that motor in a little bit better detail. You've got your uh, wiring. You've got the heat and uh, smoke damage there. And smoke damage on the wiring. And uh, down in here, you can see more of the burned up windings. Luckily, this device was able to be shut down before it actually caused a major problem. All right, we got our motor shaft. You want to take your uh, rabbit ear screws loose. There's three of them. And uh, once you've got these loose, you should be able to just pull that motor out and drop your new motor in. Here is some more evidence of the burnout. We've got soot all over this uh, blower centerpiece. Now, if it wasn't uh, obvious because the motor had started on fire, I should be able to spin this shaft very easily. And uh, it's not moving at all. Well, there we go. We got a little bit of a spin to it. But uh, she gets gets tight pretty quick. We are going back with a universal motor so that it does not have the uh, ears already mounted to the motor housing itself. So we've got our uh, belly band, our bag of parts that comes with it for mounting and securing, and there's the actual belly band itself. You'll want to take the rubber grommets that are in this bag and apply those to the holes on the belly band. And then there's some uh, rings in there, metal rings that go inside those grommets to keep them from squashing down totally flat, but still maintain vibration isolation. With a universal motor utilizing a belly band, you want to make sure that your band, which is here, does not cover your uh, air ports around the windings. You've got, you know, a grate across the other end and this end as well. But um, if you cover these up too much, you will uh, reduce the air cooling of that motor when it is running. There we go. 
motor is mounted, belly band is tight, the rubber grommets give it a little bit of twist so that it uh, won't pull out or bind up when it's trying to start. Now we got to flip it over and tighten down the uh, set screw on the squirrel cage. Before you tighten down that set screw you want to make sure that you've got your wheel pretty much centered. I simply do it by feel. I'll stick my fingers in on either side and uh, give it a finger gap test to make sure that that wheel is not going to rub when it starts running. All right, we weren't, um, wasn't too hard to get the blower out. The unit had a little bit of movement in it. Um, so we got the blower out, got the new blower in, replaced our capacitor over here. I like to make sure I label the band because a lot of times the capacitor rating and label is covered by that band. I don't want to have to remove it if I'm coming back to do a check on the system just to confirm what the capacitor is rated for. So, one of the drawbacks of a universal motor, one of the benefits actually, or drawback, whichever way you want to look at it, is that you get ridiculous length of wire with the blower. Um, and you've also got multiple speed taps. Um, in this particular instance, your white wire is going to be your common power wire. And we're going to start with um, yellow. And then we'll do a CFM calculation to confirm that we've got enough airflow without being excessive. And we'll just uh, shorten up the wires and cap them off, the ones that we don't have to use. And uh, we'll go from there. Got the thermostat wiring jumped out to bring on the blower motor. Got the door off so that we can confirm that the blower motor is spinning in the proper direction. And we are monitoring amp draw to confirm that it's pulling the proper or the proper amps. The motor is rated for Got the system running in emergency heat, 20.6 amps on a 5 kilowatt heater kit. We're going to check the voltage. And then we'll do the calculation for um, CFMs once we get voltage and a temperature split. on the hot, two hot lines. We're running 240 and a half. Now we're going to check the temperature split once we get the blower on, the blower door mounted again. We'll go ahead and take our return temperature right at 66. We'll go over and take our supply temperature. I would call that 91 and we'll do our calculation okay so we'll go to our calculator we're going to start with our temperature split so we had 91 we'll subtract that or subtract 66 from that Issues. 91 minus 66 gives us 25. We're going to multiply that times 1.08 gives us 27 degrees. We're going to add that to memory. Clear out that. We're going to take our voltage, 240.5, multiply that by the amp draw, 
to 0 0.6. Multiply that by 3.413 gives us 16909. Then we're going to take our temperature split out of memory and divide that into it. And we've got 626.26 CFM. It is a two ton system and that CFM is only a ton and a half. So we're going to have to up the fan speed a little bit, get a little bit less of a temp rise. So we'll clear all that out, raise the fan speed, and try again. All right, so we changed the fan speed off camera, um, and we came up with a supply temperature of 85, return temperature of 66. It gives us a 19 degree split. Multiply that by 1.08 gives us 20.52. We're going to save that in memory. Clear that out. Take 240.5 times 20.6 times 3.413. That gives us something screwy. Sixteen nine oh nine, same as we had before. Divide that by our temperature split, and we've got eight twenty four CFM. That's your two tons. So we're going to do an inspection of the evaporator coil with as little intrusion as possible. I've got my rigid micro explorer camera here. And we're going to run it into the uh, return plenum and see what we've got there. Got a port drilled into the plenum so I can get in there. This is the coil on this air handler, which is in stark contrast to this coil, which is on one of the units that was replaced.